They usually claim that their product has wellness benefits, but in order to avoid running afoul of the law, they leave these claims uselessly vague, saying that their product restores balance, builds the blood, uh, boosts the immune system, restores vitality, or some other claim that's medically meaningless, but that sounds reasonable to an uncritical layperson. When a product does have merit and warrants FDA approval, this merit is established through a process called the Randomized Controlled Trial, more commonly called a clinical trial. Now, a clinical trial is a very special process. It's very different from the way most alternative products demonstrate their effectiveness, which is through personal testimonials and studies. Spend five minutes browsing through Wikipedia and congratulations, you've just completed a study. Spend two minutes rubbing your chin thoughtfully and looking at the sky and you've just completed a study. You can now legally sell your product with the claim, studies show that this product will repolarize your energy fields. Not good enough for the FDA. To conduct a randomized controlled trial, a statistician will select a sample size large enough to produce a significant result. Care must be taken that the test subjects are properly representative of the target population and not tainted by selection biases that might skew the results. The subjects are blinded, knowing as little as possible about what's being tested. They are randomly and blindly assigned to one of several groups. There may be a group that will receive the treatment being studied, a group receiving an established treatment, and always at least one control group receiving a control or placebo treatment. Test administrators are also blinded. This is called double blinding, such that they don't know what group each subject is assigned to, and whenever possible they also don't know what the treatment is that they are administering. Everything is coded to avoid experiment or bias and to cancel out any effects like patients trying to respond the way they feel the experimenters want them to. The trial lasts long enough to satisfy the statisticians and the scientists. Finally, when the results are tabulated by a blinded statistician, this is called triple blinding, we get the results. The cloaks of anonymity are whisked aside, and we finally learn for a statistical certainty which treatments are effective and which are not. When this process shows significant benefits for a new treatment, and the trial can be repeated by other experimenters and yields similar results, then and only then do scientists say that this is a product that works and is supported by evidence. Let's pick just one alternative medicine to examine in closer detail. Homeopathy. This is a system invented around 1800 intended to bring into balance your four basic bodily humors blood, phlegm, yellow bile, and black bile by ingesting an infinitesimally small amount of whatever poison caused the imbalance. Clearly, all of these fundamental assumptions homeopathy is based on are now known to be complete nonsense. Homeopathy is about extreme dilution. The greater the dilution, the more effective the treatment. A tiny amount of extract, usually from some herb, is diluted in water, far past the point of being chemically pure water. Early in the dilution process, they agitate it, and this is said to give the water a spiritual imprint of the original compound, and it can then be diluted infinitely without losing its effectiveness. This water is then sold as is, or is infused into sugar pills. Let's look at some of these. These come in pill form. These are standard sugar pills, same as you can get at a pharmacy. Sucrose and lactose are the only listed ingredients. Each pill has supposedly been infused with a single drop of the diluted water. Essentially, it's a very small hard candy without any flavoring. This one is a 30C dilution of sulfur. Now that doesn't mean one part sulfur and 30 parts water. It means C, or Roman numeral 100, to the 30th power, or 10 to the 60th power, which is 1 followed by 60 zeros. Chemical purity is related to Avogadro's number, 6 times 10 to the 23rd. So technically, this solution is 37 orders of magnitude more pure than chemically pure. This is far more diluted than one sulfur atom in all the oceans of the planet. How likely is it that there is even a single molecule of sulfur in this bottle? Impossible. It's pure sugar. 
This whole shelf in the pharmacy, simply pure sugar infused with pure water. If all of this stuff is actually unsupported by any good evidence, well, that doesn't mean that it doesn't really work. But lots of people believe that it does. Smart people, your friends and neighbors, and the professionals you work with. Well, let's look at some of the reasons smart people believe weird things. First of all, the unexplained is cool. Who doesn't love a fascinating subject? Whether it's the Loch Ness Monster or a black hole at the center of our galaxy, it's cool. Or what about a new meditation technique that will let you change your body's physical appearance? We're all naturally predisposed to be excited about new weird stuff. Not even the smartest people you know are immune to this. It's human. Second, simple answers are seductive. You go to your doctor and he tells you, gee, I'm sorry, but you have kidney failure and you're gonna need dialysis for the rest of your life. Your neighbor, who sells an exotic fruit juice from Brazil, says, hey, no problem, drink this expensive juice and you'll be cured. Which sounds more attractive? Is there any surprise that people who sell nonsense continue to get customers? Most pseudosciences sell easy answers. We all want to believe that anything is attainable and easy. Third, our inquisitive nature encourages us to focus on possibilities. Scientific explanations are called theories and they always are and always will be subject to improvement or change as we make new discoveries. No matter how solid our foundation of knowledge is, and no matter how comprehensively it's validated by experimentation, every theory will always be subject to improvement. Some people take this inherent incompleteness of any theory to its logical extreme. They latch onto that speck of possibility that a theory is wrong, and they give that speck equal or greater significance than the theory. Gravity is just a theory, it could be wrong, an alternate possibility is that the Earth is expanding and pushing against our feet. Let Einstein and the others hold up their end. They know their business. Give our strongest theories the respect they are due. It is rational to accept our best theories even if you don't understand them. It is irrational to reject them for that reason, or to claim that you know better. Fourth, people simply lack the tools for critical thinking. We love the unexplained, we love easy answers, we hate complicated stuff. And nobody's ever given us tools, like those we talked about earlier, to tell science from pseudoscience. It's no wonder that most people, no matter how smart they are, believe in all sorts of crazy stuff that's not true. Most of us rely on pop culture for our exposure to science. As a result, our knowledge is generally quite poor and that illiteracy is constantly being reinforced. What this exposure never seems to include is healthy skepticism. Don't expect pop culture to arm you with the tools you need. You will need to seek those out and then apply them yourself.